All right, welcome. This is the, uh, the last session of the day for the testing automation mini conf. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome up our owner, or our opener again. Uh, <laughs> and owner. <laughs> uh, Matt is going to talk about better living through chemistry, yeah, yeah. better testing through statistics. So please welcome Matt. <laughs> Does that DuPont commercial exist in Australia? Because I'm not <laughs> sure it actually translates. Um, but yeah, so I'm Matt Trinish. Um, I'm here to, I work in the OpenStack community and primarily, and I was gonna talk today about better testing through statistics, which is um, basically about some of the approaches, uh, big data approaches we had to take to testing the large scale of stuff we're running in the OpenStack community all the time. So to start this conversation, um, for those of you who saw my presentation this morning, these are the same exact three slides about what the OpenStack 8 is and how it works. Um, but what is the OpenStack 8? Um, this is ba the basic workflow for developers in the OpenStack community. Basically, you clone uh, the upstream repository, make your local changes, and then you push it up to Garrett with Git review. Um, and when it goes to Git review, that triggers a bunch of work, um, automated testing. And you rinse and repeat that until you get it to pass the tests, and it gets approved by um, core, two core reviewers, and they say, okay, this patch is good to go. And then it triggers a second round of testing um, to verify that it merges cleanly with the current state of the repository in case anything has changed, and also um, with any other changes that have been approved at the same time to make sure that they don't conflict with each other before it merges. And this can happen a lot of times. I have patches up that have taken 50 or 60 times in that iteration of just the first round of tests and then the second one right before it merges. And after assuming all the tests pass, then it merges in the repository and you start again with your next patch. Um, what ends up launching, though, when you push a change up to Garrett is a lot of work. It's a lot of different work, too. Um, for example, there are a lot of unit test jobs, and we spin those up in different uh, Python environments. Most of OpenStack is written in Python, so uh, all the tests are in uh, Python unit test format. And uh, right now, we don't have 3.4 testing. It's just 3.5, so it's uh, Python 2.7 and Python 3.5. We have some style rule checkers um, to verify that you know things conform to the standard style of the community, and then we have these big jobs at the bottom: the DevStack Tempest and Multinode Grenade, and those spin up actual OpenStack clouds and do hit the API surface um, with some black box API testing to verify that everything works. And those take those are actually running OpenStack clouds, um, and you can find a lot of interesting information out of them. And multi-node grenade does the same thing, except it does it with two nodes, and it upgrades um, OpenStack releases. What this ends up looking like in practice when you combine the two, though, is this, which is a snapshot of uh, Zool's web interface, which shows all of the jobs running for all of the patches that have been proposed. Uh, ones on the left are the check queue, which are those first uh, proposed patches being pushed up. And the middle column is the gate, um, which are things that have already passed tests once, and have been approved by two core reviewers, and they're ready to be merged. And assuming all of those passes, um, then it'll be merged into the repository, and yep, and then keep going. So what does this mean in aggregate? Um, the gate gets really big. Um, depending on the project you're proposing to change to, it can spin off varying degrees of test jobs. Um, between five and 25 dev stacks, which uh, is a dev test environment for spinning up OpenStack, which means a single VM with four, at least four cores and at least eight gigs of RAM um, dedicated to running an OpenStack cloud and hitting it with a battery of tests. Um, about 1,000 and a half tests per dev stack environment, which means we can get about 10,000 integration tests being run against a single patch uh, with different configurations. Um, as part of that, we're launching at least 150 second level guests in that OpenStack cloud. So when you launch the, when the test uses DevStack to install OpenStack, it's a running cloud and we hit that API surface and part of that is launching VMs. So we're, we launch at least 150 VMs and um, we get about a gigabyte, um, often sometimes more, of log data being generated from all of these test results. Um, and that's a substantial amount of work and data. Um, 
on a whole, we average about 12,000 to 13,000 jobs being run daily in the check and the gate uh, queues, so those two columns on the previous slide. Um, the other thing that's really important is that um, Tempest, which is the integrated test suite that's doing the black box testing, on a whole, each individual test has about a 0.01% chance of failing, um, which is a small percentage, um, but when you're running you know, 10,000 10, tests per uh, patch, that, that's a noticeable number. And each individual run has about a 0.77% chance of failing, failure, which is also a small number, but when you deal at this size, it, um, it can be noticeable. And it always annoys the developer when they hit that one failure and it blocks their change. Oops. Um, so here's just a graph, um, because graphs are pretty. Um, that shows the number of tests we're running daily um, over the last six months. Um, and you can see it varies um, between like 100,000 and at one point we were over 700,000, which is quite a lot. Um, I think that was right before a release. And the amount of data we're generating in just logs is staggering. This is um, a view from Graphite of our log data um, and our consumed logs from uh, earlier this year, uh, because I was too lazy to regenerate the graph. And we're sitting at about eight terabytes of compressed log data we're sitting on, which is only about four months of job history. Um, it's a lot of data, and it's too much for any individual person to start looking through. Um, and that's where we need to adopt some smarter techniques on how to deal with all of this. Um, so what are the problems with running testing at this scale in the open and trying to deal with the results from it. Um, all of these systems are great for, you know, if you're looking at your one failure, but what if there's a non-deterministic uh, race condition in the testing or in the project and it, you know, randomly starts failing, how do you uh, track that down? And what about performance regressions? Um, all of these tests are running on virtual machines in public clouds. Um, there's a lot of inherent variability in the performance of the machines we're running on. Uh, it's very difficult to find a performance regression in all of that noise. Um, and also, f just figuring out how likely something is to pass or fail. Um, when you're running at this scale, it's um, difficult if you're just looking at a single job result in your, on your single change to see if, it, if it's, uh, you know, uh, the test is failing recently or not. And that's where we came up with the approach to um, dealing with this data in the community which is to look at things at a larger scale. Take a step back and stop looking at an individual test result and look at everything, um, and then use data mining techniques and some trend analysis to figure out how things are working in OpenStack as a whole just from the regular tests that we're running. They're not purpose-built tests for performance or anything else, just the testing we're going to be doing anyway as part of the uh, community CI system. Um, as part of this, we want to make sure that the test runs and the data is accessible to everyone, not just people like me who spend time in this space, and that there are APIs available for accessing everything so that developers can interact with it easily instead of you know, downloading a giant eight terabyte blob of log data onto their local server. Um, so some of the tools that we've been using to deal with this data, um, I alluded to this earlier, but we have a Graphite server running. Um, the infra services that support all of the machinery to run these test jobs all report into StatsD on the back end, and then it's accessible with Graphite. Um, this includes job result data, so you can see if a test job passed or failed. Um, but that's as low down as you can get um, when it comes to test results. It just lets you see pass or fail on the whole. Um, it's also time-based, so it's time series data, but it doesn't let you map back to a single individual test run for a patch or any other thing like that. It's just this job, did it pass or fail, how many times in this time window? Along with Graphite, we also introduced Grafana, which also talks to the same StatsD backend, but it lets uh, us build prettier UIs um, and build dashboards that are static with the same content, which a lot of project teams have been using to track bug rates and uh, failure rates in their jobs in the community. Um, we also have an Elk stack, um, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana um, that we use for all of that log data. The eight terabytes of log data, we put all of it into uh, the Elasticsearch cluster. Um, 
for a lot of reasons, mostly that all of these services are running on public clouds. We're limited to 10 days of results because we don't have enough RAM available in any of the virtual machines. And Elasticsearch really likes RAM. Um, so, but we use this to great effect to search through the logs and find trends because Elasticsearch is powerful like that. Um, another tool we have is StackViz, which is used to visualize individual uh, test results. Um, so it lets you see a test run visually. Um, at a high level, it tells you how many tests ran, if one failed, if any were skipped, how long the run took, and what the failures were. But it also lets you see all of the work that's happening during the job. Uh, this is a timeline view of the test being run uh, during the Tempest job. And there are four workers, and you can see which tests ran and whether they were successful or failed. And you highlight the failure, it tells you when it ran, how long it took, and it also will print a stack trace. And this gets us to OpenStack Health, um, because all of these tools are great, but it's confusing for developers, especially someone who's not familiar with all of these systems. Um, so that's why we introduced OpenStack Health, and I'm sorry it's a really hard to read image. Um, if I have time, I will interact with it live, assuming I'm on the Wi-Fi. Um, but the theory behind OpenStack Health is that it's a unifying dashboard for all of these test results and all of this data. Um, so we've got all of these different sources, and we want to put them in a way that's easy for developers who aren't familiar with the systems to interact with and figure out the trends and other information from the jobs that could be useful for them. Um, still not quite there yet, but we're getting there um, because there's a lot of data and it's, um, not many people contributing to it. Um, if you're curious, you can go to it at status.openstack.org slash openstackhealth. Um, and right now, it's using two sources of data, which I haven't talked about, um, subunit to SQL and Elastic Recheck. Um, and that's how we're, that, that's, th this tool is the primary way we're leveraging um, data analytics in our test results uh, in the community. So how does OpenStack Health work? Um, standard server client architecture, we've got a JavaScript front end, which people are using uh, for the web page. And then there's a REST API server, which is written in Python, that talks to subunit SQL and Elastic Recheck. Um, the API server is just written in Flask, and it queries it. Um, subunit to SQL um, is a test results data store that I wrote. Um, to just take test results and store it in a, a SQL database. We, in the OpenStack community, we run it in a large uh, MySQL database. It's got about a 200 million test results um, at any given point in time. Um, it's pretty simple. It's just a database schema and then a Python API for interacting with that database, and it contains some CLI tools for storing test results data into the, um, into the database. Uh, we use Python unit test um, with a project called subunit, which emits machine parsable um, test result data, and that makes it very easy to just convert that to SQL queries and dump it in a database. Um, we're using it to store six months' worth of data because that's when we hit the MySQL scaling limits and our trove quota is, <laughs> um, exp we trip that and we can't store anymore. Um, and this database is public, so if anyone wants to interact with it at the SQL level. Um, they can just log into the SQL server. Um, and I'm not surprised no one's smiling because running a SQL server on the public internet with uh, open credentials that you can just Google, um, even if they're read-only, is just a bad, bad idea from a security standpoint. Uh, but no one has you know, denial of service dust by just looping um, show, what is it, show processes. Uh, there's a known bug in MySQL where if you do that, it'll bring the server down. Um, but it seems to be working. Um, the machinery for collecting the SQL results, or we're collecting the results in the SQL server is a bit convoluted, but it does uh, explain a bit about how um, some of the limitations behind uh, this data source in the community. So if you remember uh, all the, the gate workflow, uh, those boxes that are Jenkins, which I was just talking to Tyler about before, are no longer Jenkins. Um, they run the tests, and they SSH into the, the test slaves that are running the, running the tests. They collect all of the logs, and they push those to the log server with SCP. Um, 
when the test is finished, it does a zero MQ trigger to a Gearman client, which triggers a Gearman job that we have these workers that sit on the Gearman bus and listen to to collect the log results and then pull the logs from the log server and convert them to the SQL inserts to put in the MySQL database. Um, and we have to do this for a couple of reasons. The primary one is security. Um, as funny as it is that the SQL server is completely unsecured, we don't want to put the right credentials on the test slaves because they're running arbitrary user-submitted code, and someone could very easily write um, a Python script that collects all of the data from it and pushes it somewhere, or you know, starts using the MySQL server for whatever nefarious purpose they have in mind. Um, but this does mean we have some limitations with the data. Um, the other half of OpenStack Health is Elastic Recheck. Um, Elastic Recheck was designed uh, on top of our Elastic Search cluster that we have all the logs in to answer the question, have you seen this recently? Um, big problem we were having two or three years ago in the OpenStack community was we were hitting a lot of non-deterministic non race conditions in our testing, and it was putting a halt to development because if we had one failure that was about above a 1% failure rate, we would um, see that at, on at least one test, jo test, test job per patch which would just block everything. And we were keeping track of that in our heads. So we decided to leverage Elasticsearch and come up with known failure fingerprints, track them in a file repository, and when a job failed, we would um, report, like, this fingerprint seems to match this failure scenario that you're hitting on this patch. Maybe you should look at the bug and help out on it. Um, Elastic Recheck is two components. It's the bot I just mentioned that'll report the identified failure to Garrett, and also reported to IRC, um, where someone will see that a job failed because of X and X bug. Um, it also has a dashboard component to show failure categorization rates and, fa and uh, the, the frequency with which we're hitting certain bugs, um, which looks like this. Um, and you can see, you can get at that from status.openstack.org slash elastic recheck. Um, this approach has been super successful, because when we started the project, we thought we had about two or three, maybe a dozen um, known failure conditions in the gate, because that's about what we could keep track of in our heads. Turns out we had about 150. And at any given time, we're tracking between 150 and 300 known failure conditions in Elastic Recheck. Um, and it helps us prioritize bugs that we're hitting or uh, infrastructure issues. And it also lets us see when we have bugs that we're not that we don't know about with the uncategorized page because it shows us every failure that hasn't been categorized. Um, and these are the two inputs into OpenStack Health that let us visualize um, both test result data and trends in the test data, as well as uh, failure conditions and frequency of failures. Um, and this lets us do some very interesting things. Uh, first is data-driven decision-making. Um, it's some, before we had any of these systems and any of the data collection, it was very difficult to know when a test was outliving its usefulness or it was failing uh, infrequently enough. But when we started collecting the data and aggregating it, we could see the failure rates and see, you know, has this test that takes three hours ever failed? And if maybe it's not so valuable if it's taking so long and it never fails. Or maybe it's broken and it's always passing. Um, it also... Um, lets us isolate failure domains. Um, so, you know, if a failure is isolated to a specific cloud region that things are running in, then maybe there's something wrong with that cloud region. Or if there's a certain configuration that's always failing, that lets us say, okay, maybe there's something wrong with the service that's running the test. Um, the other thing it lets us do is, this is the cool part, is uh, lets us find performance regressions and other trends among the noise. Um, so this graph right here is from OpenStack Health, looking at a single test and showing the uh, runtime of that test. And you can see how inherently noisy it is because we're running on eight different public cloud providers. We have noisy neighbors and different hardware that we're running tests on. And you can see the scatter plot is all over the place. That little plateau in the center, it's still super noisy. It's actually more noisy in that plateau. But someone introduced a performance regression in Cinder, which is the uh, volume service in OpenStack, and it caused the test to be noticeably slower. Um, that's about 150 seconds slower on average. 
Um, and then that was caught within a few days and fixed, and we can prove it was fixed. Um, before we were collecting the data and aggregating it, we couldn't do this at all. Um, it also lets us identify relational trends in the data, um, which uh, isn't relevant here, but if you know there's a certain cloud provider that's slower, we can easily isolate that. And th this space, we've only begun to explore it um, because limited time and people resources, but standard data analytics approaches to having everything in a queryable API are applicable. It's just a matter of time for people to actually do the work. Um, it also lets us identify non-deterministic bugs and race conditions easier because all of the data is there and we can easily query it. Um, that's something I spend a lot of time doing for people because I know the API well because I came up with it, so it's um, useful. But there are some issues with this approach. Um, if you know my rambling all, on all of the different services didn't show anything, didn't show, um, we've got a lot of varied data sources, um, and they all have unique limitations. So subunit to SQL, uh, the reason I showed you that big flow chart to show where we're getting the data from, um, we don't have a view for infra failures because of that complicated machinery. If the infrastructure fails, we never write the data. Um, can't really do much about that. Um, we also only collect uh, gate and periodic test data. Um, that's mostly for the time graphs because we want to assume the patches are going to pass, and if they're in the, the gate queue or the periodic queue, that means they've passed tests once already or they've already merged, um, and they've been approved. Um, so the, the test result data from that should be good. So for things like timing data, um, we can assume that when we're graphing it, uh, the results are valid because if we did the normal check jobs, which are the ones that um, are just proposed patches, someone could propose adding a sleep 500 to some kind of operation and then that would throw off the graph. Um, and then Elasticsearch, uh, just a stand, the way we're using log stash is uh, each line is a single document in Elasticsearch, so we're limited to single line searching. Um, and then all of the other services have different limitations, like I mentioned earlier, Graphite is only at the job level. Um, and then the other issue is limited contribution in the space, because there's only a couple to a handful of us that um, actually work on this, because everyone's busy and have their own things to do. But I feel like this is a really interesting space where, you know, you can, you know, collect QA and testing stuff with big data and analytics to you know, try to push the boundary on some things. Um, so some future work uh, in the space is to integrate all the things into OpenStack Health. One of the things I found playing in this space is that people don't like command line interfaces that generate graphs. Um, when I started doing this, because that's what I like, it was just a tool that had, took maybe 15 CLI arguments tell exactly what you wanted, and it would print out a pretty picture and show you what you were looking for. Um, it's the only one who ever used that. It still exists, and I'm still the only one who ever uses it, but it's, um, <laughs> so having interactive web pages and dashboards makes it easy for people to play with and get feedback on and figure out where, you know, we need to make improvements or we need to collect more data or where OpenStack needs to be improved. Um, and that's where, you know, integrating all of those other data sources where we're collecting all of this data, integrating that into OpenStack Health and figuring out a way to cross-correlate the data and make it easy for people to consume and figure out where things are going wrong is um, it's going to be a continual effort and how this thing grows over time. Um, then some of the other stuff we can do is use this data to optimize our test running and our schedulers for test running because we're even if um, at the macro scale with uh, things like Zool, which we're using to run the test jobs, we can be smart about how long things take and try to optimize scheduling there. Or even inside of a single test job, if you remember the StackFizz uh, project, which visualizes the timeline of things, we're running with multiple workers in parallel, and the tests need to run in a certain order. We can use this data to optimize the test runner to schedule the tests so they execute in a more efficient manner. Um, and the last thing, which I think is really cool and I wish I had more time to play with, is um, to enable automation around the failure detection. Get a little predictive about using the data. You know, start modeling it and try to come up with some stochastic models to figure out, you know, is it likely to fail uh, given certain input conditions or the state of the system. 
And that's, you know, that's where big data stuff really um, gets cool and scary at the same time. Because, you know, I don't want to buy the lemonade, but it tells me I will, and I do. Um, things like that. So there's a lot of cool work that can be done here, and we're just scratching the surface. Um, if you want to get more information, um, I guess I'm reaching the end of my prepared material. Um, you can go to the OpenStack dev mailing list. Uh, we all hang out, the people who work on this all hang out on the OpenStack QA channel on Freenode. And there are some of the Git uh, repositories for the projects that I mentioned. And if you go to status.openstack.org, which I was linking in all of the pictures, they have all of these graphs and dashboards that you can play with. Um, and with that, are there any questions? I think I'm very short on, again, but. <laughs> Or I can play around with the dashboard view and you, we can go through some of the graphs. Tyler has a question. I do have a question. Uh, OpenStack is a big giant thing. Yes. Let's say I don't work on a big giant thing. Are there, I would say, easier to adopt tools for starting to aggregate some of this data that the OpenStack project is aggregating to start to scratch the surface of, of making your own test better? Yeah, so I think subunit to SQL is actually generally useful for this kind of thing. You don't need all of the dashboards, but subunit SQL is written uh, in a generic way that if you have your test result data in any machine parsable format, you can just stuff it in a database and figure out what to do with it later. Um, and even if you're running testing at a small scale, tracking the individual test results, the individual tests in a job, and just storing that over time, you can slowly build out um, the automation and analytics on top of it over time. Um, and you can play with my subunit to SQL graph command, which takes 15 to 20 arguments to generate a picture. Um, so yeah, that, that's where I would start with this. And that, that's where I started with this, was we were running all of these tests and I wanted to see how, how many times a single test was failing in a job, which was impossible to figure out otherwise. Are there any other questions, or do people want to see me actually interact with the dashboard because this picture is terrible? <laughs> OK, let's see if I'm on the Wi-Fi and if I can deal with this. And I'm not on the Wi-Fi, so let's. <laughs> Okay. Okay, now, now we get to see, you know, latency to Australia from uh, a SQL server running in North Carolina. Okay, so now we have, um, so this is just the main page of OpenStack Health, and it shows a high-level view of all of the tests that were running in OpenStack um, CI at any given point. Um, so we can see the number of jobs, how many have failed, and how many um, are passing, um, and the individual failure rate of all of the jobs, um, the most recent failures, including uh, track bugs with Elastic Recheck, and um, which tests failed as part of that. And we can dive down. Um, so this shows us projects. And let's just pick a random project. I don't even know what that one is. Um, and we can see just the jobs that ran on that, the failures that ran on that, um, individual results and the jobs. You can pick a job. Let's go with Python 3.5. And then it will break down into the um, tests that ran as part of that job. Um, so we can see how many tests are being run in that specific Python 3.5 job, um, a few hundred to a few thousand, to a 1,500. Um, looks like they have zero failures, which is impressive, or they're not testing anything real. Um, we can see recent log results. Well, oh, there's one failure. I guess I missed that on the graph. And then we can see each of the individual tests they're running. Um, and let's pick one that's run 31 times, uh, this one. And then it'll query the database and show Runtimes, which is 
graphing algorithms gone haywire because averaging with only 31 samples over a long window of time means your average is crazy looking. Um, we can see pass and failure rates, which is interactive. And all of these are interactive. I'm just going over quickly. And percent, percentage rates, and if there were any failures, it would show stuff there. Um, and you can dive in and play with the data and find the trends and adjust time scales, uh, resolutions, because sampling for, I probably shouldn't have picked that because of a bigger query and Australian internet. Um, if there's something someone wants to say, I'm just quickly going through things, or if they have a question about it, I'm. Is this so what was that? No, they're all gener. Uh, so the question was, are these graphs generated by Grafana? And the answer is none of them are. Um, so the subunit to SQL database um, is queried dynamically by the OpenStack Health REST API server. Um, it queries the database, it gets a result set from the SQL converts that to a pandas time series, and then pushes a JSON blob out um, as the response from the REST API server. And then we're using D3 um, and I think some custom canvassing software now to generate the uh, graphs. We were using a library called NVD3 before, which prevent, provided a JavaScript object-oriented uh, wrapper around D3, but the problem we had was with the amount of data we were throwing at it, it would just bloat browsers, specifically Firefox. Um, to about 200 megabytes per graph, and things would just fall apart. <laughs> uh, Grafana would make it easy, but I don't know how to hook the data into it very, very well. I don't think it provides a good interface for doing that. It normally assumes a known backend type, and I'd have to figure out how to write that. Oh, there's a question up here. We use a similar sort of setup, PyTest and Jenkins and all that sort of stuff. If we were to implement sub, subunit to SQL yeah. and this, mm -hmm. we could have a similar result? Yeah, you'd have the same exact result. Um, so with PyTest, it doesn't emit subunit natively, but it, um, the database, that subunit is only required for the CLI tooling. You could write your own CLI tool to just use the subunit to SQL API as a library to write to the database, or you could, um, I think PyTest uh, emits XUnit, um, and you can convert XUnit to subunit very easily. Um, and then once you have that, you can just write it to the database. And once you have a running database, OpenStack Health config file just takes a database URL and you're good to go. Yeah. I mean, it'll say OpenStack and stuff, but you can patch that out. <laughs> I tried to make it as simple to do that as possible because. Um, I was working at HPE at the time, and the internal QA team wanted to do the same thing. Um, and they're always bugging me when I would hard code something into it. Um, are there any other questions, or does people want to see a specific graph of something? I think I've got plenty of time, so. Or you can find me afterwards, and I, I like talking about this stuff. <laughs> Okay, that, that was it. <laughs>